Hi guys, it is a gray and gloomy day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization on this soon to be rainy Sunday. It is my last Sunday uh, here in the this undisclosed swamp in the middle of the former Sunshine State. Uh, it is Sunday, April 18th, and uh, so what I'm going to do for what very well might be my last chronicle of the collapse, I am going to check in with uh, one of my fellow collapsitarians who I've checked in with several times before. Uh, a couple of you have sent in this uh, fine essay from this fellow named Umer Hake. Now, despite uh, Umer's unfortunate little lapse into uh, whateverness uh, in an essay that you can find in at least two other channels here in the Doomosphere, <coughs> uh, we are going to try to ignore that idiocy that he was spouting a... Uh, I think right the, a few days before he wrote this um, this essay, and I had I had already seen several versions of this story, but the way it was being presented on the mainstream media, it was so dry and technical that 99% uh, of people who even clicked on the story would not have made it uh, two sentences into it. And even I, just, uh, you know, just put it up there as one more ingredient in the stew. But uh, Umer Haik has done us the favor of, uh, of translating this latest uh, scientific study to come out, uh, and that is what Umer has on his mind today, and to redeem himself from that other uh, essay. Take it away, Umer Hake. I guess he actually wrote this one week ago today. <clears throat> we are ripping the heart out of life on Earth, and the consequences will be disastrous. This is why our civilization and way of life is heading for collapse. And here is a chart. This is the reason uh, our civilization is headed for collapse. Is that chart right there. Thank you, Umer, for charting the course of our... It's the, it's the, it's the little dip in the middle that we're mostly talking about in this story. Uh, this rapidly dipping middle. What is this chart all about, Umer? Take a look at the chart above. Some charts tell a complex, urgent, necessary, alarming story at a glance. And this is one. Let me try to endeavor to tell you its story, one of spiraling down the road of catastrophe. Now, this is a long read I'm getting ready to dive into, guys. I'm going to put the link on here. I encourage you to shut me up right now. Read it yourself. <coughs> but if you want to just sit here and listen to some old doomer read this for you and making a few comments along the way, you're welcome to stick with me. All right. What the chart says is this, its x-axis is latitude, as in geographical latitude, and its y-axis axis is species richness, a measure of biodiversity, how many species are found at a given latitude. The idea is to gain a picture of how life is distributed on planet Earth which, by the way, in these dark ages of billionaires hoping to flee to Mars, is still the only life we know of anywhere in the universe. <clears throat> so, 
How is life distributed on planet Earth and how is that distribution changing and how fast? The authors of this new study behind the chart tried to answer just that question and their results are as stunning as they are terrifying. They discovered the following and then uh, you know, there's links to all to the study and whatnot if you want to read it yourself. Life on Earth <clears throat> used to be distributed just the way you might expect on a healthy planet. There was a lot less of it at the poles where the number of species tapered and there was more of it as you approached the equator where the richest regions of life were found rainforests and jungles and prairies. <coughs> it, meaning the chart, looked like a bell curve, a smooth and gentle shape. That was the complex and beautiful dance of life on planet Earth in motion. But that is what it used to be. What is it now? The distribution the bell curve has collapsed. The middle of the bell curve has imploded. Now there are two new peaks emerging as the distribution becomes bimodal. So we have kind of like a double bell forming on the planet, which is a fancy way of saying something more like a U-shaped in the middle instead of the, you know, top, it's now the bottom. Uh, we, li we are living in an upside down world. Okay, that U shape in the middle doesn't look or feel right. It looks menacing and alarming because it is. What the new distribution of life on planet Earth tells us is this. Life is fleeing the equatorial regions and migrating north and south. That is because equatorial regions are simply becoming too hot to live in. Not just for a few species, but on such a massive level that the distribution of life on planet Earth has been altered. We are ripping the heart out of life on planet Earth. Who made the planet into an oven? We did, meaning humans, if you're assuming you're a human reading this. We, humans, made the planet into an oven. We, humans, have radically altered the shape of life on planet Earth, literally altered the shape of life on planet Earth. Have you heard the story of Icarus, perhaps? Has there been a greater act of hubris than this? And the consequences, as I'm going to explain, are going to be catastrophic. This is one of the greatest transformations in history, not our history, but history, period, deep history. When was the last time such a thing happened? Life has always ebbed and flowed in distribution, but the authors of the study point to the end of the Permian period when temperatures shot up by several degrees due to greenhouse gases coming from massive volcanoes. That was 252 million years ago, and it, and it took more than 30,000 years for that warming to happen. <clears throat> we are toying with the planet on a scale we don't understand at all. <clears throat> we, humans, are altering patterns and shapes of life that predate us not by a few thousand years, which is when we emerge as walking apes, but by millions of years. <clears throat> Turning back the clock, 
to the biggest mass extinction in the history of the planet getting ready to repeat itself. <clears throat> but that is hardly the worst of it. How long has it taken us humans to rip the heart out of life on planet Earth? The collapse the, uh, these authors have found in marine life dates back just a handful of decades. In the 1950s, life had the gentle bell curve shape of a normalish distribution you might expect. By the 1970s, you know, 20 years later, the middle of the curve had begun to collapse as species fled equatorial regions in vast numbers, and by the 90s, the curve had imploded. By the way, the authors specifically studied marine life, but many other species are migrating away from the equator too, and he puts links to that. So this study was mostly looking at marine life. So, it has taken us roughly 50 years to rip the heart out of life on planet Earth. Think about what that means for the next 50 years. Hmm. Now, let's come up with the implications of all of this. Imagine for a moment that a giant hand came out of the sky and gave you and everyone you ever knew a great big shove. It forced you on a mass migration like nobody could even remember. The place you lived was now unlivable. You had to find a new habitat. That is what we have done to life on planet Earth. <clears throat> but a mass migration is not a pleasant thing. Along the way, many would die of starvation or illness or fatigue or thirst. Not everyone would find a new habitat, and even for those who did, they would have to find a way to make a living all over again. Maybe your skills in whatever new land you arrived in would not count for anything <coughs> in the same way refugees with PhDs drive taxi cabs. <coughs> A mass migration is better called a great transformation. It is not just a pleasant walk through the woods to a new home. It is the bitter and desperate act of survival as a last resort. And you would be lucky to live the same way ever again in stability, comfort, prosperity, in that niche history and labor have carved out for you. <clears throat> it is exactly the same for every other kind of species on planet Earth. To say that we have caused a mass migration away from the equator is to vastly, vastly underestimate the situation. The authors of the study point out that at the end of the Permian, my uh, chair arm has taken a mass migration. The authors of the study point out that the end of the Permian, as the climate heated rapidly, there was a mass extinction. Ninety percent of all marine species died off. The stakes of mass migration are, as they would be for you and your family, life or death, and the odds are against survival and in favor of mass extinction. <clears throat> so, these are the crazy cranes uh, here at Crazy Crane Camp around you here in the background. So. What happens is life on planet Earth flees equatorial regions in desperate, bitter search of a habitat it can survive in? Yes, crazy queen. Our civilization begins to collapse. Fast and hard, 
it is already crumbling after all. Think about what is in all those equatorial regions for a second. They contain what ecologists call ecosystem services. The economist in me has a simpler way to put this. They, they supply the basics of life to us and our civilization. Those equatorial regions contain the world's bread baskets, the lungs of the planet, the great and mighty rivers which feed the oceans. They supply our water, food, medicine, and air. What, what happens is equatorial regions turn into fire belts and flood belts. The earth scorched, the soil cracked, the rivers running dry. Nothing can grow there. Life is already migrating precisely because there is less to subsist on there from the very bottom of the food chain, plants. And as life flees equatorial and tropical regions that have become searing, unlivable ovens, all the basic functions of our civilization are going to collapse. Let me say it again so the relationship is clear. The basic functions of our civilization are going to collapse right alongside the implosion of the distribution of life on planet Earth we have been accustomed to. When the great rivers have run dry, go out there and look at uh, what's going on in the American West today. When the great rivers have run dry, what are we going to drink? What are we going to breathe as the forests burn? What are we going to eat as the bread baskets turn arid and all the animals we feed with their grain and corn starve too? And what happens politically as the stuff we have come to take for granted runs out. Entire regions become unlivable and economies go into perma-depression, if not fascism like America already exemplifies. Bang! Our civilization collapses right alongside the distribution of life on planet Earth. I would like to tell you that I see a way out of all of this, but the truth is that I don't. Yes, thank you, no hopium here. The pattern the authors of this study have discovered is a fatal one. It is not going to stop anytime soon. It is only going to accelerate, and that is because plenty more warming. Nobody knows how much, but easily one to two more degrees is already baked in to the climate plans we have now, which Prime Minister's trumpet, they act like that, you know, this Paris Climate Agreement and all of this, this BS, they act like that is going to save anything yeah, right. Thank you, Umer. But the more we learn about how dire our situation really is, the more alarming it seems. We are discovering the price of our hubris, the damage we have inflicted on the planet and life on it exceeds our worst predictions and forecast and every day seems to bring a new surprise of how bad it really is. So let me give it to you straight. We are ripping the heart out of life on planet Earth and the consequences are going to be disastrous. Our civilization is probably not going to survive it. This is as close as Umer gets to Hopium in this article, probably. Our civilization is probably not going to survive it. 
Remember the mass migration I asked you to picture? It's not just the animals who are going to be affected terribly, desperately hunting for ways to survive. We humans will be too. Call that karma if you like. Call it stupidity. Call it greed, violence, ignorance, or call it the plight of the walking apes. The ones who, in their terrible, fatal hubris, thought they and their gods ruled the planet, life called home for a scant few thousand years, destroying and maiming and killing everything in their way until nature took back what was hers in fury and vengeance. <laughs> Amen, Brother Umer Hake. Uh, you have fully redeemed yourself as a collapsitarian and a doomer after that last, uh, that last embarrassing uh, essay, which we don't need to talk about on this channel because we like to keep uh, the collective intelligence of this channel a little bit higher than some other places in the Doomosphere. <clears throat> and uh, with that, I am going to wrap up today's sermon uh, of the Apocalypse. Amen to Brother Umer Haik. And, uh, all right. It is my last day here uh, at Crazy Crane Campground, and uh, I need to pack up this kitchen into my gas-sucking truck, and I will head off to New York tomorrow, baby. Come see me at Bugs in a Jar Farm in New York <clears throat> while you still can. Bye, guys.